Nanti Hani kalau balik busy ni. Oh grand your birthday you Hani. Thank you so much for coming. Selfie. Next time kita pergi Bali. Hani. Eh. Hashtag #holiday hashtag #bff. Nak beli yang ni dah. Nanti aku bayarlah. Kau buat pinjaman untuk birthday party kau tahun lepas? Susah ni semua tak boleh harap. Selamat ulang tahun ke-24 anak ibu. Ibu. Tolong Ani ibu. Kereta aku. Kau ada? Kereta aku boleh cucuk USB. Kau ada? USB je? Hai! Kereta aku ada kursi urat. <coughs> Kau ada? <coughs> ada. Kau ada? Tak ada. Kereta aku boleh pergi 330 km sejam. Kau ada? Dia tu tiap-tiap bulan dia bayar tiga ribu ringgit. Kau ada? Insurans dengan road tax kereta dia ni setiap tahun lima ribu lima ratus ringgit. Kau ada? Itu tayar kereta lah. Kalau sekali tukar lah, lah eh, dua ribu ringgit. Lu ada? Tak ada. Tapi kau ada ke duit nak bayar semua benda ni? Tak ada, tak ada. Beli kereta jangan ikutkan hati. Nanti susah hati. Jangan sampai begitu. Tanya AKPK terlebih dahulu sebelum membuat sebarang keputusan kewangan. Hashtag Ask AKPK. Jumlahnya... Jumlahnya RM1,500. RM1,500 je? Sekejap, ya. Ini kad kredit. Platinum. Kau ada? Bukan satu, tapi sepuluh. Kau ada? Aku boleh beli beg tangan ni. Kau ada? Aku boleh makan sedap sedap dekat sini. Kau ada? Kau like sekarang? Okey, okey. Apa yang kau nak? Aku swipe je. Kau ada, 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 kau ada. Encik Sheila ada. Ha. Anak teman popular. Ramai orang cari dia. Kau mana dia? Siapa telefon tu, Mak? Bang. Ha? Bang? Bang pun cari anak teman. Kau mana dia? Dia dapat banyak surat peguam. Kau ada? Sekarang ni aku stres. Kau ada? Tak ada. Eh, drama ni untuk kau. Kat, kat, kat. Nanti hutang meningkat. Jangan sampai begitu. Tanya AKPK terlebih dahulu sebelum membuat sebarang keputusan kewangan. Hashtag AskAKPK. Betul ke ini rumah dia? Betul lah tu. Uf. Besar. Ah, ah, memang besar. Kau ada? Tak ada. Rumah aku ada track kereta mainan. Kau ada? Tak ada. Rumah aku boleh main polo air. Kau ada? Tak ada. Hmm. Kolam renang dia ni, kali isi, bila air dah cukup untuk mandi sebulan. Kau ada? Tak ada. Rasa je tu. Beletrek rumah dia ni, cecah dua ribu. Mana taknya, aircon, lampu, tinggi, pasang dua puluh empat jam. Kau ada? Tak ada. Untuk memberesin rumah ini aja perlu pakai lima orang. Setiap seorang gajinya dua ribu. Kau ada? Tak ada. Untuk jaga rumah ni kena ada lima orang tukang kebun. Kau ada? Tak ada. Setiap bulan dia bayar rumah ni dekat bank sepuluh ribu. Kau ada? Aku tak ada. Tapi kau ada ke duit nak bayar semua ni? Ah, tak ada. 
<laughs> besar rumah, besarlah belanjanya. Jangan sampai begitu. Tanya AKPK terlebih dahulu sebelum membuat sebarang keputusan kewangan. #AskAKPK Adakah anda terkesan dengan kehilangan punca pendapatan? Anda terbeban dengan bebanan hutang? Mencari saluran untuk menjana pendapatan? Anda ingin menceburi bidang perniagaan dan bantuan modal? Adakah anda ingin meningkatkan kemahiran? Adakah anda buntu dan tertekan? Sertai program Demi Esok, Ayo Bangkit! Langkah 1. Dapatkan maklumat berkenaan peluang untuk menjana pendapatan. Klik pautan disediakan bagi mengetahui peluang yang ditawarkan oleh setiap agensi. Langkah 2. Bantu kami mengisi maklumat untuk membantu anda. Langkah 3. Anda akan disalurkan kepada agensi-agensi yang berkaitan. Tindakan anda diperlukan demi esok yang lebih baik. Kerana aku memilih untuk tidak lari Kerana aku memilih untuk mengurusnya Kini aku bebas menikmati kehidupan Asin, kalau sudah besar mau jadi apa? Asin mau jadi doktor. Besok, ini boleh pergi sekolah. Asyik mau jadi doktor. Supaya kalau ibu sakit, Asyik boleh rawat ibu. Ibu, Asyik mungkin tidak dapat tunaikan impian Asyik. Tapi Asin tahu Impian Asin Hidup dalam perjalanan adik Perjalanan Yang membawa harapan Untuk memerdekakan keluarga kita
Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Sorry, sorry. Ada technical sikit. Ya, minta maaf kawan-kawan rakan-rakan sekalian. Okay, kita bersiaran lagi pada hari ini ya. Bersama dengan uh, Global Money Week uh, 2021. Okay, seperti yang kita dah war-warkan semalam, kita akan bersiaran uh, secara langsung selama dua hari untuk mengupas topik-topik yang menarik berkenaan dengan dengan keusahawanan sosial. Kita ada kesejahteraan mental dan kita ada juga fit fizikal bersama coach dan pencerama-pencerama hebat kita. Okay, so kita melihat uh, tahun ini, Global Money Week 2021. Kali ini kita membawa tema Take Care of Yourself and Take Care of Your Money. Tema ini memfokuskan tentang kepentingan membina daya ketahanan kewangan dan macam mana kita kekal sihat dalam konteks semasa iaitu sihat mental and sihat fizikal. So hari ini kita akan menyajikan satu lagi program ya, uh, yang uh, saya rasakan begitu menarik ya berkenaan dengan keusahawanan sosial. Ya, keusahaan sosial. So bersama kita pada hari ini kita bawakan daripada My Harapan Ya, iaitu Madam Jaya Sheila yang akan bercakap berkenaan dengan social enterprise Your community, your responsibility So sedikit sebanyak berkenaan dengan uh, penceramah kita pada hari ini Madam Jaya Sheila merupakan uh, Head of Academy of My Harapan Youth Trust Foundation She is a certified mental toughness coach and counselor registered with Lembaga Counseling Malaysia Okay, training and development is an area that is really close to her heart. She has been involved in individual life-changing programs, yeah, for almost more than 15 years. She brings her, her own life experience during her workshop and creates very great impact towards the audience. Okay, so tanpa melengahkan masa lagi, yeah, we, uh, kita menjemput. Madam Jaya Sheila untuk meneruskan sesi pada hari ini ya iaitu berkenaan dengan social enterprise. Back to you Madam Sheila. Thank you. Thank you Mona. Thank you so much. Thank you for the wonderful introduction. Hi everyone. Hope you are doing well on a late Friday afternoon. Uh, I am so happy to be here. Of course it's a V a E virtual kind of platform but nevertheless I'm very happy to be able to share my experiences and some thoughts on social business and social entrepreneurship. Yeah, hope all of you are doing really well. Um, and uh, I hope you will enjoy today's session. Before I go on, I would like to sincerely thank AKPK and their partners um, for inviting my Harapan and uh, me personally um, to share about social business during this Global Money Week. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Now, before I start, um, it's only fair that I start off with introducing the organization that I come from, My Harapan Youth Trust Foundation. Now, how many of you uh, know about My Harapan Youth Trust Foundation? I'm not too sure. If you do know, just put in the comments that uh, yes, or if you don't know, no. You know, that way I will know how many of you are aware. All right. Um, but I will nevertheless introduce my Harapan to you. Okay. Uh, maybe we can move on on the slide. Okay. Can I get the next slide, please? All right. And the following slide. Okay, my Harapan, never mind the slides, uh, because I'm unable to control the slides on my side, some technical issues. So AKPK on their side, they will be helping me to control the slide. Uh, yes, who are we, right? Um, basically, we are a local base, that means Malaysian based, uh, uh, not for profit uh, NGO. Uh, we are based in Damansara. We have been around for about 11 years. This year will be our 11th year. And we work with youths. Can I have the next slides? All right, and our mission is we want to develop independent and wholesome Malaysian youths by providing access to choices and opportunities. Yeah, our target group uh, are youths between the ages of 14 to 35 years old. We do a lot of programs to give them uh, the choice and opportunities for them to realize their uh, future, the opportunities that is available uh, beyond just um, the platform of uh, working or just doing the day-to-day -day things. We, we give them that particular platform 
um, and we 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 try and support them and and create that environment to empower them. Yeah, we also drive uh, sustainable youth programs, uh, community supported initiatives benefiting the nations, and of course, together with this comes in the funding mechanism. And uh, when all these three things comes together, uh, we develop the youths furthermore. Yeah. So how do we do this? We have three pillars within my Harapan. We have three pillars. The first pillar is uh, the youth engagement department. Uh, I think we can go to the next slide. Uh, the youth engagement department, which uh, which is what I'm doing now. We outreach. Uh, we do capacity and capability development and special projects. We do road shows. We engage with the youths basically under this umbrella. Then we have the funding. Um, funding basically looks at uh, projects and uh, businesses uh, that are viable to become um, a social business. And then we will look at how we can fund them or we work with our network and partners to offer some funding for them to grow or to start. And this too is supported by the research and policy development. All right, research and policy comes in to look at all the programs, to look at the need, current, past, future needs. And then uh, we get our data from here so that we can make our programs uh, re uh, relevant and uh, reliable to the people that we, um, uh, we, we serve. Yeah. So basically, these are our three pillars. So this is very brief about my Harapan because today's session is about community and how you can take responsibility to basically uh, give them back. All right. So if you want more information about the organization that I come from, you can actually go to our website, www.myharapan.org, or you can like us on Facebook and all our programs are there. Yeah. All right. So I will dive into today's topic, which is the social business, right? How many of you are aware of what social business is? If you are aware 100%, then you say you are aware 100%. You can put it in the chat. If you are aware 80%, no problem, put it in. If you think I don't know social business that well, I only know about 10%, then you can also just state it there. Doesn't matter whatever the percentages you have, Today, it is my duty to at least make it to about 100% so that uh, once we are done with today's session, you completely understand what social business is. Yeah. All right. Uh, OK, so let's move on to the next slide. All right. So this is the father of social business, Professor Muhammad Yunus, right? And he has got many quotes, but one of the quotes that I picked for today is, young people should think in a different way. They should be job givers and not job seekers. Now, many of us today are basically, uh, uh, we, we look for jobs. After we finish our education, we look for jobs, which is not wrong, which is definitely not wrong. But we do have another choice or another opportunity. We can choose to become job givers instead of job seekers. So how do we do that? And today, when we talk about community and your responsibility, how do we do it? in a responsible manner, whereby we don't only seek for jobs, but create jobs. So Professor Mohammad Yunus here started the term called social business. Yeah, so I'm going to take you through the history, the definition, and also the principles of social business so that we understand well what social business means Yeah, when we talk about it and how you can be a part of this particular mission to change the community that we live in. Yeah. All right. So the definition of social business, right, as you can see on the screen, a social business is a non-loss, non-dividend company designed to address a social problem. Now, if you notice, there are three main definitions here. First is non-loss, non-dividend, and then I have highlighted in red, addressing a social problem. Now, addressing a social problem is the core of social business. So when you want to start a business, usually your core will not be addressing a social problem. What will be the core? Yeah, you are right. If you're thinking about profits, you're not wrong. You think about money. You think about maximizing shareholders' values. Yes, no worries. We are on the same track. That is a traditional business. But if you talk about social business, social business starts, or when I say starts, the heart of the social business is addressing a social problem. 
Yeah. So that is the heart of uh, social business. And the other two definitions are non-loss and non-dividend. Like any other business, social business aims to not make loss. All right. Maybe in the beginning, we might make some losses. But as we go along, we try and not make losses, right? We try and break even at least. So our cost equal to our income. So we don't make losses. And non-dividend. Now, a lot of uh, organizations out there, they have dividends, which is not wrong. But social business, one of the principles is we do not pay dividend to our shareholders or investors. So if you have investors in your, in your, in your organization, you just pay them back whatever you need to pay back. But more than that, you don't actually share the profits. So what do we do with the profits? Right. So the profits are used to expand the company's reach and improve the products or services. So basically, in a nutshell, the definition, which also covers a few of the um, principles of social business, non-loss, no dividend, it is started with the aim of addressing, addressing a social problem. Yeah? And the profit stays with the company for expansion of geographical area or product and services. So that is the definition of social business. All right. So it's very important for us to understand the definition because there are many other definitions out there for different, different businesses. But when it comes to social business, that is the definition. Yeah. So the start of social business. Now we can see some photos on the screen. When you look at these photos, when I first looked at these photos, and these are real photos um, are taken in the Beng Bengal famine, yeah, back in the 1970s. Now, when I look at these photos, I become really sad because you see kids who are begging and they are so malnourished. No, there is no nutrition, right? They they are they are they do not have enough food, and you can see. Uh, ladies by the streets. Now, if you see such a thing, what would you and me, you know, normal human being, what would we do? We will prob probably hand out food, right? Or we will hand out clothing, or we will hand out money for them to buy food. What this depicts is when I give them this one-off food or clothing or money, right? It only solves their problem for a day. So this is a social problem in the 70s. And you don't give them a long-term solution. You give them one-off solution. What would have happened? Would they come out of this famine? Or would they continue staying in this particular uh, poverty at that time? So Professor Muhammad Yunus, who saw this around his university, um, he was teaching in the University of Chittagong yeah, in the 1970s, and he was teaching economics. And economics, if you, if, you, if you agree with me, economics says when there is demand and supply, everything goes really well. Everybody uh, is taken care of. Nobody will become poor, right? So people like you and me who is not really good in even economics, we know that if there is enough demand and supply, there should not be any poverty. So for Professor Yunus, who was teaching economics, he couldn't make sense why around the university, in the villages around the university, there were a lot of poverty. So he said, I have to do something. I have to break free from this. I have to break them from this poverty cycle. Because if they are going to poor, be poor, their children are going to be poor. And their children's children, and for generations, they are going to be poor. So hence, started social business. He started a concept to think of something really differently. He did not hand them a fish, but he was trying to teach them to fish so that they will be able to fish for their entire life and come out of the poverty. So he started as a small project. He started giving them micro credit or also known as those days Grameen credit. Right? They, he started to give them small amount of money where they use the money to start small businesses, small, really small businesses. Yeah, and these businesses started to give them some income so that they could buy daily food and provide for their children and for themselves on a daily basis. So they take this credit, they start a small business, they get everyday wage from the business, and slowly they were able to come out of the famine. So he started this research in the 1970s. 
And in the 1980s, it was turned into Grameen Bank. So that was the birth of social business. And it started because of the famine, right? So sometimes, you know, now COVID is happening and a lot of us, we feel why is COVID happening? It's terrible. It's uh, not good. I'm mentally tired. I'm exhausted. Yes, I agree with you. But sometimes when these things happen, something good is born out of it. Just like when the Bengal famine happened, social business was born out of it. Yeah, so you can see uh, Professor Muhammad Yunus giving out credit to women. And you can see the difference in the women, right? Look at their face, their happiness when they receive the money. Because this money, they can now go back and start a small business and they can provide for their family day after day. All right. So that's how or that is the history of how social business was started. All right. Can I go to the next slide? Okay, so now to just give you a difference, right? Maybe you still don't really understand how is a social business different from a normal business. So I've made a comparison here between the Grameen Bank and a conventional bank. So let's take a bank in Malaysia, right? A conventional bank. It could be a May Bank. It could be a CIMB Bank. It could be any bank, right? So if you compare the normal traditional bank that does business to uh, maximize their profits, their only aim is to make profit, right? Whereas Grameen Bank is to bring economic and social change to the poor. The aim of the bank itself is different. Like I told you earlier, the definition is to change or to overcome a problem in the society. Yeah, so that is the first thing. Second, the Grameen Bank was basically established based on trust, right? If you go to a bank today, you walk in and you say, I want to pinjam 10 ringgit, I want to you know, borrow, I want to loan a 10 ringgit. Will they give it to you? No, they will not loan you a single cent without collateral, right? They want to know your pay. They want to know uh, your status. They want to know whether you can pay back. So conventional bank is based on collateral. But a Grameen bank or a social business bank is based on trust. The next is Grameen bank looks at what the borrower can have. So when Professor Yunus gives that microcredit or the Grameen credit, he looks at them having food every day, them having clothes every day, them having shelter every day. So it looks at what they can have in the future. Unlike a conventional bank, conventional bank looks at what you have now, right, before they give you the loan. So there is two different perspectives to this. Yeah. The next is it's located in rural areas. If you go to Bangladesh, um, the villages are really in the inner parts of the, uh, the, the, the towns, right? You have small towns and then they have villages very far away from towns. And these banks operate in their space. But our CIMB, Maybank, um, you know, all the banks that we have in Malaysia, I don't think many exist in kampung, kampung or rural areas. They are located mostly in urban areas. The bank goes to the customer, right? If it, it's a social business and it's made for the people who are poor, so it goes to the poor community. They go to them. They open, they operate in their environment. Where else? A normal bank, customers have to go to the bank. You, need, you want money, you take your debit card, you go to the ATM and then you withdraw, right? So there's the difference, right? Flexible payment scheme. People who took $10 loan, $10 USD loan, they take five years to pay back, right? Our banks, if they give you, I don't think there is, first of all, a $10 uh, loan available. Even if it is available, you can't take five years to pay back. Probably you have to pay back within, um, you know, five months, right? And our minimum loan amount is maybe 5000 and not $10. But Grameen Bank gives small amount of loans because they want to help the poor. Most owners and borrowers are poor. Right. In a conventional bank, most owners and borrowers are wealthy men. All right. You have to have a salary before you can borrow money. And loans are for productive activity, not for consumption. So it's very clear the loans that was given by Grameen Bank is for them to start an activity, for them to start a business, for them to use the money to make more money and not for consumption. For example, consumptions are to buy a house, to buy a car. Right, there are loans available out there for that, but Grameen specifically gives them loan for productive activity. 
So I hope you were with me and you understand the difference between what uh, Grameen Bank uh, wanted to do and how the conventional bank uh, basically operates. There is two different operations here, yeah? So that's how social business is done as well. You, you may not want to start a bank, right? You can start any business, but you need to differentiate your business from the normal traditional business out there. So I'll go to the examples later. I will share with you one of the example in Malaysia. Then you will get better idea of how um, a, a social business can be operated uh, as compared to a normal traditional business. Yeah. All right. Now, with this, we will move in into the seven principles of social business. When you want to do social business, there are seven principles. Some of it has been already covered at the beginning when I did the definition. All right. So if we move forward, you will notice. All right. You will notice there are seven principles. But before I go into the seven principles, for, for starting the Grameen Bank, uh, Professor Mohammad Yunus was given or awarded the uh, Nobel Peace Laureate yeah, uh, in 2006. So he started the bank in 1980s. After almost 20 years, he was awarded. Uh, he was the first, uh, Grameen Bank was the first corporate to receive such a Nobel Peace Prize, right, in 2006, right? So not everybody gets such a recognition, but because he started and he turned the poor people into someone who is respectable today in society, he was awarded this particular Nobel Peace Prize. Okay. All right. So now we move to the seven principles. All right. Seven principles. The first principle of a social business. So if you're thinking of starting a journey of uh, uh, in the area of social business, the first principle, which was covered in the definition, Business objective will be to overcome poverty or one or more problems. When we talk about problems, problems, not individual problem, we are talking about the problems in our community or society, right? Today's topic is community and your responsibility. What are the problems? What are the challenges that you see in today's community? You can pick one. It could be education. It could be healthcare. It could be technology, right? Access to technology today with COVID, many of them do not have access to technology. Hence, they are not able to be on par uh, with the school curriculum because the school curriculum is converted into online, right, last year. But not many of them had the access. So they had to like wait, see, um, you know, all those things, right? And environment is another area that you can tackle on. What are the challenges that you see in the, in the area or in the society you are in? So that is the first principle. The first, first principle is the business objective. The second principle, once you have identified the business uh, objective, what is it that you want to solve? The second one is you have to come up with the right business model so that you have financial and economic sustainability. Remember, non-loss, right? It has to be a business that is not driven by charity or donation, but you are doing it so that you have the financial and economical sustainability. So the first two the third one the third principle is i told you no dividend so investor so you have investors who invest in your business so if they give you thousand ringgit once you start your business and you're doing well you have profits you pay them back the thousand ringgit once you paid back the thousand ringgit no dividend is given beyond investment money so for example i start a business i i start a tuition class I need 5,000 ringgit. I have five investors and they have all injected 1,000 ringgit each. In a year, I was able to make profit. Every month, I make a profit of maybe 1,000 ringgit. So I pay back all my investors 200, 200, 200 every month. Up to five months, I'm done with 1,000 ringgit, paid back. I don't pay any more money. My investors have gotten back the amount that they have invested. Right. So that is the third principle right then what happens to the money after the investment is paid back so there is profits after that i get profits i keep with me profits do i then go and buy luxury items for myself do i then go and spend the money the way i want no right once the investment amount is paid back company profit stays with the company for expansion and improvement 
right? So basically you do product development, you make your product available to many other areas. So for example, right, if I were to use back the example of uh, Grameen Bank, when they first started, they only offered the services at the at, at the village called Jobra, right, Jobra. But after years passed by, today, right, if you compare today and those days, the entire Bangladesh almost have access to Grameen Credit. All right, so it has expanded geographically. Why? Because as their profit expands, they also are able to expand the reach and they are able to give these services to many other out there instead of just one area. Of course, the products has also evolved. Today, they have not only uh, Grameen Credit, they also have uh, loans for education, children's education. They have loans to build houses, build businesses. So their products has also expanded. Why they have expanded? Because with the profits that they have, they are able to expand all these things. All right. So remember that once investment paid back, the profits are used for expansion. All right. Uh, principle number five. All right. If we look at principle number five, environmental conscious, right? Environmental conscious. Now, whatever business you want to do, it can be, uh, a makan shop, right? You want to start a makan shop and employ all the B40s in your restaurant. But in makan shop, you have a lot of uh, scissor, scissor makanan, right? Every day you will have oil, excess oil, you know, unwanted vegetable, unwanted food, the leftovers and everything. What do you do with this? Do you go and throw it in the nearest drain that you find or the nearest uh, river that you find? No. You have to be environmentally conscious. Maybe you want to recycle all those things and uh, make it as a fertilizer. Or you work with certain uh, respective agencies to further develop another product out of that. You don't throw it in the river or the drain. You have to be environmentally conscious when you're running a social business. A lot of times we forget this when we are doing really well in our businesses, uh, whatever... Um, uh, uh, pollutions that we uh, come up with in our businesses, we basically go and uh, um, uh, destroy the environment around us. So we have to be really conscious. And the sixth one, gender equality. Here, when we talk about gender equality, so when you hire people in your social business or when you pick your teammates, right? You're not so big yet. You're going to start small. As you're starting, you want to pick your uh, teammates. Make sure you have equal gender. So if you have two boys, you have two girls. Try lah, try. I know it's sometimes difficult because we want to work with the same gender all the time. But if can, have gender equality and try and pay them according to the market wage. You know, sometimes I, I do hear social businesses say, I am a social business, so I cannot pay so much. So I just pay them uh, intern salary lah. You know, maybe to start off, you can start off like that. But as you are growing, uh, treat your people right, give them the right working condition, give them the right chair, the right lightning, lighting, the right space so that they stay with you and build your business longer. So the sixth principle is gender equality, workforce gets market wage with better working condition. And the last one is do it with joy. So a lot of times uh, we don't do things with joy, right? We, we are so stressed, yes? Yesterday, your topic was about that, right? A good stress, bad stress, you know, how do you handle stress? Yeah, we, we, we forget to wake up in the morning and smell the flowers, right? And hence, uh, the seventh principle tells you that you need to always do whatever you do with joy, with happiness. When you're helping someone, when you're helping your community, when you're helping your society, you do it with joy. So these are the seven principles of social business very easy so social business the definition non-loss non-dividend addressing a social problem all right and then when you look at the seven principles it's very simple the first principle is the business objective second is the financial and economic sustainability the third is the investor get back their investment and when investment is paid number four the profit stays with the company for expansion purposes all right, number five, environmentally conscious. Six, it's about workforce, gender equality, and uh, 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 workforce gets market wage with good working condition. And finally, 
do it with joy. All right. I hope I'm not going too fast. But if I do, you can comment or ask me questions. Then I will be able to repeat or explain to you further in detail. Or even after this one hour program, you can also get in touch uh, with me um, through our website or, uh, you know, um, you can uh, ask your questions later. Yeah. So we are done. Right. So if I were to summarize, I think it's in the last slide. All right. In summary, right, there are mainly four sectors in our industry, macro level. If you look at the macro level, there's private sector. Then we have the socially responsible businesses. And then we have social business or enterprises. And then we have the charity and voluntary sector. All right. So we will, you, you now, I hope you understand what social business is. After this, I will cover the difference between social business, traditional business, and uh, charity based business. So we, as a social business, we fall under the social economy. Our sales come from, uh, our income comes from sales of our product and services. And we start up with grants and donation. All right. And our, our goals are basically social goals. If you notice the private sector and socially responsible, their income comes from sale. Their goals are somewhat private goals for private sector and socially responsible business. Uh, they have divided into a little bit of social goals and private goals. But for social business or social enterprise, the goals are social goals. When we say social goals, we talk about the problem that you're addressing and your social impact towards your beneficiary. All right. So that's what we are looking at here. So this is in summary. All right. If we look at the overall of how we fit in into the entire ecosystem. Right. If you have any questions, you can ask me. If you do not have any questions, I will move on to give you some examples. All right. But before I give you example, I will summarize. OK, so this is how we look at. Um, can I have the next slide? OK, so this is how I look at nonprofit. The goal is to help society. And where do they get their money? Their money is basically from donations. Business, their goal is to make money, make profits. All right, where do they get money? They sell products or services. So here we are trying to marry the nonprofit and the business, and it becomes a social business or social enterprise. So the goal is to help society, all right, to help people who have the need or uh, to address a problem. The money, where do we get the money, the funding to do this? We sell products or we sell services just like the business we run our business like a business but our goal is to help the society so this is how we come in we marry the non-profit and the business we run social business like a business but the goal is not to maximize profit but to uh, help the society so i'm going to share with you an example of a social business in malaysia so that you will understand better, right? Uh, an example of social business in Malaysia. Today, I've picked a social business that was born out of my harapan. These are our colleagues before, many years ago, and they were inspired to do something for the society. So hence, they started a social business, and they are growing. Uh, uh, today, they, they have, another, uh, I think, their second gym, all right, in Shalam, and uh, they are growing big. So I'm going to share about them, all right? So today, I'm going to share about Discover Muay Thai, okay? So the problem, what is the problem that they are trying to address? Uh, I think we can move on into the slide. Right, the problem that they are trying to uh, address is, if you look at uh, the picture, I have a picture there, but uh, can, can we move the slide? Okay, the slide is not moving. All right, I have a picture there. Maybe if it moves later, you can have a picture. Now, Discover Muay Thai, they, they identified a problem in the society. All right, what is the problem that they identified in the society? Basically, they looked at a group of youths at risk. When we talk about a group of youths at risk, we are basically talking about um, school dropouts, youths who drop out from school, uh, youths who are... Uh, into drugs, 
suka melepak, you know. What happens of them in the long term? What happens of them in the long term is basically they uh, become like uh, a risk factor in the society. So over time, what they will do, uh, they will get into gangsterism, they will start to do unhealthy activities and so on and so forth. So this kind of more time, um, identified this problem in the society. They said in Malaysia, there are many youths who are basically um, at risk. They, they, they do not have a pathway. They do not have a continuation of what to do. They do not have a future. They cannot think beyond their current uh, situation. They got no education. They do not have a, a proper step-on guide. All right, so they are dropout. So that's the problem that... Um, discover more Thai identify all right so what did they do once they identify the problem what is the solution and social impact that they came about with all right so what they did is they started a, a short-term academy a, a, a three to six months academy for this type of youths so what they do they go by batches they recruit these youths uh, from uh, about 10 to 15 of them each batch they recruit them and then they basically train them uh, in gym skills. You know, gym skills, Muay Thai skills. They train them in Muay Thai. Why they pick Muay Thai? Because they realize these kids uh, who are at risk, they do not have discipline. Basically, they fight back to their elders. Uh, they, they, they fight back to everybody in the society. They have this anger. You know, so they don't have discipline to do anything, right? The second thing is, they do not have respect. They don't respect anybody in the uh, in the society or their peers or their teachers, right? They don't respect them. So that's the second thing that was uh, missing from them. And the last thing that was missing from them is honor, right? I think we can move the slides um, further. Okay, one more. Okay, one more. Okay, all right. So. So these this youths were recruited and then they were put into a bankale to teach them these three aspects, right? Uh, discipline, respect, and honor. Honor is basically knowing what is right and what is wrong. Because these youths being in that particular environment don't know what to do. They don't know what is right and what is wrong. So they get into all the wrong activities in their life. So within these three to six months, they are not only given the gym skills, they are given language, right? a bit of um, uh, English language. They are taught how to do presentation. They are taught how to handle customers who come into the gym. This particular gym is in Jalan Alor, yeah? Jalan Alor. And a lot of uh, the people who come to this gym are tourists. Tourists are basically matsales and, you know, people who are short term. So they come in. So when they come in, these boys are exposed to working with them, to teaching them, to guiding them, teaching them a little bit of the gym skills. So they learn uh, the social communication part of it by learning customer service indirectly. At the same time, they are also given exposure to go and do social work outside of the gym activity. Right. So they are. Their schedule basically starts five in the morning. Five in the morning, I think they run for 10 kilometers. Every morning they run 10 kilometers. They come back, they are cook, they cook their own breakfast. They Monday, they have their breakfast and then they start with the gym work, right? They put the equipments, everything in place. So by doing this for six months or three months, they become more respectable. They respect each other. They respect the people around them, the people who come to the gym. They learn discipline because they have a routine. They have a schedule. So they learn the discipline. And lastly, they learn what is right and what is wrong, right? So after six months, right, um, I cannot tell you, but if you go and see on your own, after six months, the transformation is great, right? Uh, the, the, the way they speak, the way they behave is really... Um, amazing compared to the first day when you meet them right so this is what this kawa Thai do right so this is the social impact so every batch they bring in they train them they they uh, sort of give them a purpose in life and after that these kids can go back to school or they can work with the gym 
all right or they can go and work elsewhere and almost all of them till today have succeeded in their life yeah have moved forward in their life so this is one of the social business how does D discover motai make money okay i recruit 15 to 10 to 15 uh, youths i put them through this program all this needs money how does discover motai make their money all right so discover motai make their money by providing um, personal pt session personal training sessions all right uh, they charge per hour or by uh, sessions they provide these services to corporates to individuals they also have their gym they have one gym in putrajaya they uh, sorry cyber jaya and one more they have in shalam they've just started one more in shalam so this also is money making all right so this is how they get their money and once they get their money from this business the money is used to train and to um, lift up this at risk youths from the community so this is what this is one example we have many examples but we do not have time to share all the examples i do not have the time the luxury of time this uh, afternoon so i share with you only discover motai all right i think we can move on to the last slide okay so that's their business okay can we go to the can i go to the next slide okay next slide okay so the social impact is can you go uh, yeah. the social impact is improved lifestyle of youths at risk all right that is the social impact how they make money they make money by offering programs and products to public and corporate right so they marry the the social part and the business part together to form discover more time so today you and i can do the same right i started off at the beginning by telling you you know uh don't be job seekers become job givers all right and professor mohammad you know says people should wake up in the morning and say i am not a job seeker i am a job creator just imagine every morning you wake up and then you tell yourself i'm not a job seeker i'm a job creator today you and i we have this opportunity we have this choice you may finishing your you may have finished your studies you may be finishing your studies or you have got long way more before you finish your studies it doesn't matter where you are but you have a choice to do good at the same time earn an income not necessarily you have to be a job seeker being a job seeker is nothing wrong but if you can start something small something in your own community look at the problems around you and then you start by having a solution to that and then turning it into a project and then making it big you can do that so this afternoon right you uh, i think i want to go to the next slide can you go to the next next okay so this afternoon uh, what i want to tell you is uh, there are a lot of problems in our society it's not only youths at risk it is um, you know poverty is there single mothers are there all right uh, education people who can't read and write are there you know today we are going into the technology part of it a lot of old people are not able to use any of this technology you know they are going to be left behind they are stressed so a lot of issues that you identify in the society we live in in the community that you live in what you going to do about it can you come up with a solution now, once you have come up with a solution, you don't have to start big. You may be a student, so you start as a project. A good place to start is while you are studying. You start with, you know, you start small. You don't have, you dream big, but you start small, right? But the important thing is you need to start, right? You need to start wherever you are. You start, start as a project. And then you see whether you can turn it into a business, yeah, slowly. If you need help, you can come to us. Form a team. Don't do it alone. A lot of time people want to you know become superheroes so they want to do it alone you can be a superhero even being in a team so put a team together maybe one is very good in engineering one is very good in communication one is very good in maybe coming up with solution one is very good in uh, you know uh, uh, it or whatever so put the team together and then work on it together right a good team size would be four to six so start with a team don't try and do it alone it might be difficult all right and don't be afraid 
Albert Einstein said, don't be afraid of mistakes, right? You're going to make mistakes. That's why you need to start small. When you start small, when you fall, it's easier to get up, right? So don't be scared to make mistakes. Make mistakes as much as you can. Only through mistakes, you have the experiences, the right mistakes. Huh? And then you have the experiences to uh, build on it. And then you turn it into something beautiful, all right? And a lot of times, uh, when we get ideas, when we get solution, it is already a solution that is available out there. Many solutions are already been R and D and uh, available out there. So build on such platforms. Don't reinvent the wheel. Doesn't have to be something new from you. You take what is out there and you enhance and make it better. All right. So it saves time. And in all of it, you, me, everyone, we have talents. So let's use our talents and make something beautiful out of it. Yeah. So with that, I want to thank you for listening to me for the past, I think, 40 minutes or so. All right. Uh, talking about social business. Social business is something really beautiful. It's different from the traditional business because social business aims to change the social um, status of our community because it is our responsibility today to do something for them. Yeah, so um, you can start a business doing good at the same time earning an income. So uh, don't just stop by just listening to me. Try and go back, think about it and start small. All right, so thank you so much. Uh, you can contact us. I've left behind uh, our uh, landline number there. Uh, you can also drop me an email. My name is Sheila. All right, so uh, Sheila at myharapan.org. You can get in touch with me via email. I'll be more than happy to um, answer any questions that you have. All right, thank you so much. Thank you so much. If there are any questions, I'm able to take it. If there is none, uh, this is the end of uh, my lecture. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Miss Sheila, for a very insightful and valuable info. Yeah, I love to take uh, take uh, these uh, quotes from Prof Yunus. Yeah, I really love Prof Yunus so much. Yeah, young people should think in a different way. They should be a job givers and not job seekers. Yeah, and then we need to start now. And then first, maybe with project, and then second, we proceed with your business. Okay, start and work in a team work together because together everyone achieve more that is time for team isn't it michila yes. okay don't be afraid don't be afraid you can try because a lot of opportunity out there yeah and then we need to know also about the seven principle of social enterprise we are so glad to have uh, michila and my harapan today uh, a lot of information that we get for today's session thank you michila thank you my harapan and then we hope that we can um, uh, create a lot of uh, more program in future with my harapan thank you so much okay thank you and then thank untuk, you Pamona. okay all right thank you so much yeah. okay bagi yang lain kita masih lagi ada satu lagi sesi pada petang ini pada pukul lima setengah ya kita akan bersama dengan get fit get fit get physical maknanya kita nak menjaga kita punya kesihatan fizikal ni bersama dengan Coach Ken pada petang ini. So teruskan bersiaran bersama kami di uh, Global Money Week ya bersama AKPK pada petang ini. Jangan ke mana-mana. Teruskan kesetiaan anda bersama kami dan kita akan jumpa lagi pada pukul lima setengah petang pada hari ini. Dan terima kasih banyak-banyak kepada Miss Sheila. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much and my harapan. Okay, we, uh, we jumpa lagi nanti pukul lima setengah. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Assalamualaikum and AKPK luar biasa. Thank you. Surat kabar lama, bateri lama, tabung lama sudah tak guna bagi saya lo. Haha, <tik> bilakah kali terakhir anda menyimpan secara tetap? Syabas, sekiranya anda seorang penyimpan tetap. Menyimpanlah mengikut perancangan kewangan anda. Sila hubungi AKPK untuk nasihat kewangan percuma. AKPK untuk esok yang lebih baik.